What tech stack is the right tech stack to build your new company, product, whatever on? That's a question I don't know the answer to, but we're gonna explore how I got to what I decided was the right path for what I'm gonna be building here at Interview At. We're a bit early in these videos, but you know, I heard loud and clear from the customers that not only do they wanna see the how do I interview better and how do, you know that content, but they also wanna understand as I'm building out this business, what are some of the things that I as an ex Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle, startup founder, senior executive guy, how do I go about this and try to do it in a way that is, well, quite frankly, economical and two, I don't ever wanna raise VC money. That's a video for another time, but I never wanna ever take VC money ever again. That's all we're gonna say about that today. So the questions I had to ask myself around this tech stack for this product I'm going to build is, well, what do I use? And I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've had my hands in code. And quite frankly, I, I'm not, like the joke I always make is, you know, me writing code is like a four-year-old with a hand grenade. It's effective, it'll work. You don't wanna be around when it goes off because it's probably gonna be messy and you just don't wanna have to clean it up. But here we are, I can write code, I can get into trouble. And that really, it, it causes me to not really know where to start. Right? And it's it, you know something I know is true when people are kind of thinking about if you're an engineer or you're a product manager who has some technical skills, it's like, well, what, what's the right tech stack? What do I do? What do I do? And the reality is, is well, two things. One, you don't want to pre-optimize, right? You don't want to solve for what is the most scalable language or database or platform, whatever. When you pre-optimize, you're solving problems you don't have. The problem I have right now is I don't have customers paying me money. I mean, it's real simple. That's, that is the number one problem I have. I have an idea in my head. I need to get it in front of customers, get their feedback, and determine whether or not they can pay me money. That has absolutely nothing to do with scale. And there's no way that this app is just going to go to the moon. And I have challenges related to my ability to scale that, at least in the near term. I don't believe that's the case. I don't think there's any near-term decision I'm going to make around the tech stack that I choose that's going to cause that problem. So I have to dispel that from my mind as one of the things that's going to influence what I do. Right. Uh, the, the second thing is, well, okay, do I stick with what I know, right? So I primarily write code in Python. I'm very, well, I'm really super okay at Python. Uh, I can get back to C Sharp if I needed to, but I wouldn't trust myself. And I haven't looked at the .NET stack in a while, but uh, JavaScript has just been this elusive topic out there that I'll consider learning one day. Uh, I learned enough to get guess the LP, uh, dot com up and running, but you know, I just, I don't know enough, but I know that it's probably what I need to do. And that that's factoring into my decision, right? Uh, but most importantly, what is gonna allow me to get something in front of customers working, usable, the fastest? And really that's the big problem. So the questions I face myself with are, are one, what's familiar, right? What do I know? What can I get comfortable with? What's gonna feel completely foreign and therefore it's just not worth my time? Like just what's familiar? How do I feel mm, okay with this? That's one of the starting points. So JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, didn't want to touch PHP, uh, I'm not going to look Go, Lua, or some of these other things, and definitely not touching Ruby on Rails. Me and my brain just never got along with Ruby on Rails. I know there's plenty of developers out there, but you know that's kind of the, the, the data set of languages that I'll look at. Second thing, what kind of data am I going to have? Now, this was a tricky one because I, I, I'm more than really okay-ish. Maybe I'm super really okay-ish at SQL. I understand SQL databases. I get relational databases. Totally understand it. I've never actually deployed a NoSQL database. I've never actually used a NoSQL database, but I recognize that a lot of what I want to be doing has JavaScript data that's going to be JSON data going over the wire back and forth. So I'm probably going to have to learn that. So I actually spent time investigating NoSQL databases just to understand how they work, to see if my brain will work with it. And if it's something I can learn fast enough that it's not going to be an obstacle to me launching something quickly. So that was something I had to consider. Like what kind of data am I going to be processing? It's not just users uh, and, and kind of questions and answers, but like there's complex data. How do I store it? How do I think about it? What does that mean? Definitely on my mind. I've made the decision to write the code myself. Uh, and the primary reason for that is uh, I want to be able to build it in my own kind of image of what I want, conception, I don't know that I know enough about what it is yet to hire developers. And developers are super expensive uh, and you don't want to have them sitting around waiting for you to work on stuff, especially if they're charging by the hour. That's just, it's a disaster. So in the short term, much like I did with guestdlp.com, I'm going to take on the coding challenge myself to build the initial iteration of this. So I have to consider while I'm building this, am I selecting technologies which are going to dramatically reduce the population of people to whom I could hand this off or hire or whatever I need to do down the road, can I hand this off to people to take care of it afterwards or continue to build on top of it? And am I making big mistakes there? And finally, where am I going to host this thing, right? I, you know, look, it, it is as old as I am. It is surprising that I can't manage a Linux box. I just, I never learned enough to care. I, I just don't care. 
I don't care. The pitchforks will come for me, I'm sure. So with that in mind, I, I have a predisposition to want to build something that is completely serverless or as serverless as possible. So that is where my mental head is at, though you know, I'm kind of looking at AWS as my launching pad for most things because it just feels like it's been easiest for me to get help from people that I know as well as people on, on Upwork when I'm hitting challenges. It just seems to be that's the one that people kind of say, hey, this, this solves this problem, this solves, have you tried this? So it, it just has made that easy. So those are the questions I had to consider kind of going into my research. And then, then a secondary set of questions, and this is really important, is are any of these decisions I'm going to make, this is something I'm asking myself as I'm learning about new stuff, are any of the decisions I'm about to make going to lock me in somehow? Right. So when I, here's a great example. When I first started going down the rabbit holes of like, okay, what tech stack do I want to look at? Firebase kept popping up as a technology, Google's Firebase. Uh, and one of the apps that we use for managing our kids' sports teams is built on top of Firebase. I'm like, okay, seems like it's robust enough. People use it. You know, there's some people I know that uh, evangelize for it. So let's have a look at it. And, it, you know, it's funny what you can learn online and get just dangerous enough to be able to ask smart questions, to ask better questions of Google and YouTube. Uh, to learn a bit more. And a common problem I saw cropping up again and again was Firebase can spiral out of control with costs, one. And two, your data is kind of locked inside of Firebase, really hard to get it out. That was a concern for me. I didn't want to risk putting stuff into the Google data structures and app ecosystem when I've seen kind of how they've handled some of their other products. It doesn't make me feel super comfortable that that's the way we're going to go, right? So that's one. Uh, serverless versus hosted. We talked a little bit about this. I don't want to be managing boxes. I really don't. So to the, the greatest extent possible, I want a serverless uh, infrastructure. Uh, and then finally, database type, right? I need to make sure that I'm not locking myself into, into any weird kind of decisions based on the database selection I make. I think I'm fine going with with uh, um, uh, with a NoSQL database, but you know, we'll see. So how do I go about answering these questions for myself, right? Because I'm kind of operating on my own. I mean, people have full-time jobs and there's, you know, there's, look, there's communities everywhere, but you know, the reality is I have to learn as quickly as possible. And the way I do that is I just, I consume a ton of information, largely through, quite frankly, Googling into Stack Overflow, no surprise there, uh, just asking questions Stack Overflow, see how people solve different problems and what kind of issues they're hitting, but also YouTube videos. I continue to be shocked at how much great content there is on YouTube for teaching about these topics. Uh, and there's a few creators, I'll, I'll tag them below, that have fantastic channels that I never would have had any reason to find these people or watch any of their content if I wasn't kind of thinking and asking smart questions of the database or the you know Google search uh, to say, hey, I need to learn about this, I need to learn about that. Found some fantastic teachers who are sharing amazing content that it can feel scary to not know any of this stuff, but I gotta be honest with you, I knew nothing about the MERN stack, nothing about the MERN stack beyond M-E-R-N-N -N, uh, two months ago, nothing. And I've learned enough in the last two months to know that that is the right decision, right? Mongo, Express, React, Native. That's where I'm going. That is the tech stack I'm using. That's the path I'm on. And it is in large part thanks to the creators I found on YouTube, uh, one of them also has a course I paid for on uh, Udemy. I think it was, I, I want to say it was nineteen dollars, right? It's a couple of coffees. Like, what, why wouldn't I make sure that this creator gets some additional money? Uh, because he's got this twelve-hour course. It's going to walk through building an end-to-end -end application using the Mern stack. Aces. So YouTube has just been a tremendous resource for me, and I look, I, I can't say enough about it. But there are a few things you have to be creative in your search terms, and as you learn more, you need to start adjusting your search queries. Now, one of the things I've noticed about YouTube is uh, if you watch one video from a creator, all of a sudden YouTube goes, great, here's more, and just shoves as much from that creator in your face as possible, which can be good, uh, but not if it's not, like if you're on a specific mission for things you're trying to search for, just kind of be aware that that's the way the algorithm appears to work. Uh, two, you gotta be patient. Like if you're learning a bunch of tech stuff, it, I, you know, I have an engineering degree, I've worked at tech my entire life, and there's things you just gotta, it's going to be confusing and it's going to take time, especially if you haven't had your hands in code and you're looking to go start learning how to code. It can take a while. And it's just, it's one of those things you just, you have to be patient. Um, you know, one of the things I've done with YouTube videos and it's just, I, I picked it up 
a long time ago and listen to audible books, but it's just something you might want to consider. Uh, I listen to things at 1.5 speed on YouTube, uh, sometimes as high as 2.0, but if I'm trying to learn something, 1.5 appears to be the limit on YouTube for me. Uh, audiobooks tend to be read a lot slower, and so those I tend to tune up to about uh, 2x speed when I'm listening through it. It sounds like a chipmunk, I get it, uh, but once you kind of get your brain attenuated to that speed, you'd be surprised uh, how fast you can move through content and pick stuff up. So those are the questions I went through on my path to landing on what I'm gonna build with uh, as I go forward. So uh, coding starts, this week. It, it was supposed to start two weeks ago, but as with everything in life, it has a funny way of getting in the way of things. Uh, but yeah, coding is going to start this week and I've got to just start plowing ahead, right? And I want to split the application that I'm going to build. I've, I've got a pretty clear picture in my mind of what I want to build, uh, but it, it's nice that it's got kind of, a, it's a two-step path in ultimately delivering the transformation with customers that they're, they're going to be seeking, I believe, based on the feedback I've gotten from people, uh, that I've got a nice visualization type step one, but it still requires the things I'm going to need, uh, complex data storage in a database. So that's you know the Mongo database, um, the ability to do user authentication and logging in, uh, deploying. I got to refresh my Git skills a bit more. Well, refresh. <laughs> to learn Git a little bit more than I've been using it because uh, save as files on my local hard drive is not the way to do development, as I found out. So I got to learn how to use Git a little bit better. I've learned a, a great deal about VS Code, which, by the way, I didn't realize what a great job the Microsoft team had done with VS Code. Holy cow, what a great development tool that they've built there. Very flexible, a lot of add-ins that you can uh, tack on and make the experience just, just wow. It's a great, great product. So, you know, golf clap for the folks at the uh, on the VS team for building that tool because it is just Amazing. Uh, so I've got to start writing code this week, and uh, you know this is the journey we're on, and we'll you know it's going to take a while, but uh, that that largely has to do with me figuring out what I need to do, and then it, hopefully I'll get to a V1 that I can put in front of customers and get their feedback. And at that point, you know, look, either I have something and people want to give me their money, or I don't, and I will not have spent money on developers who are super expensive uh, and may not. I don't have the, if I don't have the skill set to call BS on what they're doing or hold them accountable, I'm not really a great manager either. So this is helping me get into that right mindset and do just enough that I can get to a place where I can build something that I can answer the question, is this something people will pay for? And then hand it to somebody and say, please go make this better because I'm terrible at coding. <laughs>